Blue Origin just announced their biggest new Glen upgrade yet. Nine engines instead of seven, thrust jumping from 1,750 to 2,250 tons, payload doubling to 70 tons. The team's confidence has never been higher after their second successful mission, but while they celebrate two flights in 2025, SpaceX just completed their 100th Starlink launch this year alone. Two missions versus 100. What does that actually mean for Blue Origin's future? And why might these impressive upgrades reveal something troubling beneath the surface? Let me break down what Blue Origin just revealed and what they're not saying. Right after their second successful mission, Blue Origin dropped their new Glenn 9x4 variant. 9B4 engines on the booster instead of 7. 4BE3U engines on the upper stage instead of 2. The numbers look incredible on paper. Liftoff thrust climbing to 2,250 tons, potentially reaching 2,610 tons with upgraded engines. The second stage jumps from 155 to 310 tons of thrust, possibly hitting 384 tons. But here's where things get interesting. Why this rush to announce such a massive upgrade after only two flights? The new configuration targets a very specific mission profile, mega constellations, lunar exploration, and national security payloads. Blue Origin's CEO Dave Limp even shared imagery showing the 9x4 variant standing taller than Saturn V, estimated at around 120 meters total height. The fairing expands to 8.5 meters diameter, making it wider than the rocket body itself, just like Falcon 9's design evolution. 70 tons to low Earth orbit, 14 tons to geosynchronous orbit, 20 tons for translunar injection. These numbers put New Glenn in direct competition with NASA's Space Launch System, except Blue Origin promises superior reusability. Launch timeline? Late 2026 or early 2027, specifically aimed at lunar missions. Now here's what makes this announcement so revealing. Blue Origin isn't waiting for the 9x4 version to implement upgrades. Starting with Mission N G3, they're rolling out what they call Block 1.5 improvements to the current 7x2 configuration. The BE4 engines get pushed past the 250-ton mark each through propellant subcooling. Total booster thrust rises from 1,755 tons to 2,032 tons. They've already demonstrated 283 tons per BE-4 engine on the test stand at current propellant conditions, with expectations to reach 290 tons later this year. Those numbers actually exceed SpaceX's Raptor 3 engine, which produces 280 tons at sea level. The upper stage B-3U engines jump from 145 tons total to 181 tons, with test stand demonstrations already hitting 96 tons per engine. Future improvements include reusable fairings for higher launch rates, redesigned lower-cost tank structures, and more efficient thermal protection systems. And here's the kicker. They're implementing these changes on the NG-2 booster itself, which has already returned to Cape Canaveral for refurbishment and will fly the NG-3 mission. The confidence seems genuine. The engineering appears solid. So what's the problem? Let's look at what Blue Origin accomplished while making these announcements. Two orbital flights in 2025. Both successful, absolutely, but two flights. Meanwhile, on November 20th at 10.39 p.m., SpaceX launched their 100th Starlink mission of the year. 100 dedicated Starlink launches between 2,500 and 3,000 satellites placed in orbit in 12 months. Over 10,000 satellites launched total, with more than 9,000 currently active. That's not just a numbers game. That's operational tempo. That's infrastructure. That's the kind of cadence that comes from solving the problems Blue Origin is still working through. And those problems, they're hidden in the engineering details Blue Origin shared. The 7x2 Block 1.5 version increases engine thrust without changing the fuel tank design. The focus shifts to lowering manufacturing costs, which affects propellant allocation between stages. Those upgraded engines will need further refinement to efficiently use their propellant. Blue Origin admits this themselves. For the 9x4 variant, the concerns get more serious. The second stage and fairing grow nearly twice in size while the booster expands only slightly. 
This creates a significant imbalance that could reduce efficiency before stage separation. The second stage engine layout presents another challenge. Doubling from two to four engines without any indication the structure has widened to properly accommodate them. Fitting four engines into a space designed for two creates potential interference issues. Then there's the reusability factor. New Glen remains only partially reusable. The second stage stays expendable. The main reusability improvement, the fairing. That's it. Compare that to Starship, which aims for full reuse of both stages. New Glen also relies solely on drone ship booster recovery, limiting deceleration and return speed compared to Starship's eventual Mechazilla tower catches. Blue Origin's own timeline reinforces these concerns. The NG-3 mission targets early next year, meaning the final days of 2025 or first days of 2026. After 25 years of development, they're celebrating the prospect of their third flight. SpaceX completed their 149th launch of 2025 by mid-November, needing just 21 more missions to hit their 170 launch target for the year. Even Amazon's Project Kuiper, which should be Blue Origin's natural customer, has faced such severe delays from their launch providers that they've turned to SpaceX for help. Starlink's only serious competitor can't rely on Blue Origin's launch cadence. The math tells the real story. Blue Origin correctly positions New Glenn against the Falcon family rather than Starship. Even with larger payload capacity, reaching Falcon's launch cadence and booster reuse record will require many years. And that's assuming everything goes according to plan. Falcon 9 took years to achieve its current reliability and tempo. New Glenn is starting that journey now. What makes this situation particularly challenging is that Blue Origin isn't making technical mistakes. Their engines perform well, their boosters land successfully, the engineering is sound. But sound engineering doesn't automatically translate to operational tempo. SpaceX didn't achieve 100 Starlink launches per year through better engines. They did it through relentless iteration, vertical integration, and a willingness to fail fast and learn faster. Blue Origin's announcement of both near-term and long-term upgrades after only two flights suggests they're trying to compress that learning curve. They're announcing Block 1.5 improvements and Block 2 capabilities simultaneously, promising capabilities that took SpaceX years to develop through dozens of flights and failures. The fundamental question isn't whether Blue Origin can build a rocket that performs as advertised. They've proven they can. The question is whether they can build a launch system that operates at the cadence modern space infrastructure demands. Starlink needs constant replenishment. Lunar missions need reliable launch windows. National security payloads need guaranteed access to space. So here's the truth that Blue Origin's impressive announcement can't hide. Two successful flights, incredible engineering achievements, engines that outperform Raptor 3 on paper, a roadmap that promises 70 tons to orbit, but while they're planning their third mission, SpaceX is preparing for launch number 150 of the year. The gap isn't closing, it's widening. And that's what's actually happening to Blue Origin right now. Not failure, not bad engineering. Something potentially worse, success that arrives too slowly in a race that's already been won by someone else. 25 years of development led to a rocket that performs beautifully but launches twice a year while their competitor averages one launch every 2.4 days. Blue Origin can still build a sustainable space business. The New Glenn upgrades are real and valuable. National security customers need alternatives. Lunar missions need reliable heavy lift. But catching SpaceX? That window might have already closed. Not because New Glenn can't compete on capability, but because SpaceX has already built the infrastructure the cadence and the customer base that took a decade of relentless iteration to achieve. The question isn't whether New Glenn succeeds, it's whether success even matters when you're racing someone who's already lapping you. What do you think? Can Blue Origin close this gap or has SpaceX already won the commercial launch race? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this analysis opened your eyes to what's really happening in the space industry, hit that like button and subscribe to Atlas Space. We break down the stories behind the headlines. Share this with anyone who still thinks the space race is close. Thanks for watching, and remember, in space, momentum matters more than potential. Matters.